So just very quickly to run through how you can use Celebri Model Checker to do some clash detections. Um, process is really straightforward. You have rules out of the box that will do an element of it for you. Um, so I'll just use the default sample file, um, smcbuilding.ifc, um, and I'll just grab that one and open it up. Um, same process for any file. It doesn't matter if it's a single file or a federated file of multiple IFCs. It really doesn't matter. Um, so in this instance, we have the architectural model. And just for argument's sake, I'm also going to add in the um, structural model and some ventilation models in here as well. So get your IFCs open, first and foremost, um, and get them into your model. And then we can start building on the, the class detections. Um, so head straight over into the checking section. Depending on if you have a role pre-selected or not in your, uh, in your file settings, you'll get this, uh, this window. It really doesn't matter which one of these you use for the purposes of, of this. Um, I'm just going to choose BIM Validation um, Architectural for this one. I'm going to click Next. And upon doing that, it will ask you to um, choose what rule sets you want to run. So this intersections between architectural components is a pretty good architecture on architecture clash. But if you come down and click add rule sets, we can come in and add some more. So as well as the architectural rule sets, we can go up a level, we can go into the MEP rules and we can say intersections in MEP. We can say intersections between MEP and structure. And we can say intersections between MEP and architectural and open those. And I'm also gonna go back up into the structural rules folder and just do the same one for structure on structure as well. So we've got intersections for the three individual disciplines and then we've got intersections across multidiscipline models as well. I'm just going to press OK after selecting those and that will select them and place them into my list of rules. Um, and really quickly just to explain how the rule, um, the clashing rule works, it's, it's really straightforward. If you come up to the top here, intersections between architectural components, expand that. Let's go intersections, same kind of component. And then we've got a rule here which will check for all walls against all walls. I'm just going to right click that and go into rule parameters. And this is how we configure a clash detection inside of Celebri. Quite simply, we have a filter on the top left hand side. That filter on the top left hand side is basically going to go and say, go and include a component or exclude a component that has a specific criteria. So in this case, include all curtain walls, which are labeled as architectural, and include all standard walls, which are labeled as architectural. It will exclude any decomposite that's not empty. So if there is um, a, an orphan component or an orphan wall in there, it'll, it'll ignore it. And then you have component two. So we're checking component one against component two. So over here on the right hand side, again, because we're going wall on wall in this instance, it's including and excluding the exact same components. Once it's made those selections, it can check them for duplicates. So two components of exactly the same size, shape and volume in the same position. It can check for components inside one another. For example, a wall that is slightly smaller than the other, but sat inside one another. And it can also check for standard clashing, which would be an overlapping component. This is where we specify our tolerances, so we're happy with anything uh, around 25 millimeters, and we're also happy with 50 liter. The most important aspect of Celebri is that we can go in and add exceptions. And these exceptions are really straightforward to use. They're really logical. Um, for example, you want to ignore all, um, if you were doing MEP clashes, if you want to ignore all ducts and pipes going through a wall that were lower than 50 mil, 25 mil, or whatever it might be, we can come in here and add those exceptions. The same for verticals going through a slab, and the same for light fixtures in ceilings, so on and so forth. And again, these are just filters, so they work in exactly the same way as all of the other filtering functionality inside of Celebri. We'll ignore those for now, leave this rule the way it is, and hit close, and just go ahead and show you one of the MEP intersections so let's go MEP and architectural models. Let's go building services and architectural components. And let's say, um, we're gonna say building services and other construction components. We're gonna go into the rule parameters 
and then we can come in here and see exactly what we're looking at from an architectural perspective and exactly what we are looking at from an MEP perspective. This is where you might come in and start adding your exceptions to say that if you find a duct or a pipe, in other words, a covering in this case, include coverings, IFC coverings, that are going through a wall, minimum protrusion of 50 millimeters, ignore them. It doesn't, we, we don't want to see them. They're not issues. They're not things that are going to be important to us. They're just going to be resolved on site very quickly and very easily. So they're not actually clashes as such. So we can go through and, and determine exactly how we want these to work. But um, quite simply, these out-of-the-box rules, while you probably want to add to them a little bit, if we hit check, that'll go away and very quickly check our model, dependent on the size of the model, of course. And then we get our standard high risk, moderate risk, and low risk based clashes. And if we start looking at the architectural clashes, we can see that we have some wall on wall intersections here where we have components inside one another. So there's not a clash as such, but there are two components directly inside one another. So it picks up on those. If we go and have a look at our structural components, we can see that we have instances where we have columns and slabs clashing with one another. If we come and have a look at our MEP clashes down here, we can see that we have instances where we have duplicates in our HVAC models, where we have multiple components placed in exactly the same position. So again, Salibra is really quick at identifying these clashes. The, the rule set that it comes with is, is not dissimilar to other tools that you may have used. Um, it's not dissimilar to, um, to other clash detection functionality that you may have used directly inside of Revit or, or inside of Navisworks or something like that. Um, and once you've got your head around the basic Salibri interface, we can pick up these clashes very easily and start reporting on them. And if you did want to report on any of these, for example, let's go back for the first one, same kind of component, wall-to-wall -wall intersections. You get the screen the way that you would like it to display. For example, I have these two walls displaying here. I might come in and select one of those walls, for example, the smaller of the two walls. Let's just select the smaller of the two walls over here. And then we can say, okay, with that wall, I want to highlight it a specific color to make it really obvious exactly what that is. So let's say that we want to paint the selected one with a color. Let's say that we're gonna paint it red, press okay. And then when we deselect everything and put it back to normal, we have a really clear view of exactly you know, what clash we have in this instance. And we could come in here and, uh, and maybe say that we want to add some red line markup, maybe put uh, a revision cloud around the problematic area and some red line markup. Once we have that, we take the issue at the bottom left here, we right click, we add a slide, we fill out our description, which can be done manually or through the automated description filling. And once we have that, we can reject it, give it a BCF status, make someone responsible for that. And once we've got that responsible person, we can make sure we're happy with the image that it's given. We can add a comment. And then that will be saved away with the exact location, the components involved. That's now saved as a slide. And then standard Salibi practice from that point onwards. So we can communicate that. We can add a presentation using our checking results and then we have our clash report, if you like, which if you need to take out into any format, we'd recommend BCF to take it through something like BIMTrack or BIMCollab. We have the ability to use PDF or Excel to be able to save that into a variety of different formats. We traditionally don't, uh, don't use the, um, the, the dumb formats, let's say, like Excel and PDF until the end of a project to provide your audit trail. We usually push BCF, but for this example today, you can get those clash detections out in any format that you may need. So that's a really quick overview of how to use clashing in Salibri. Um, it, this video is based on people that are already knowing the interface and already kind of understanding how you get around. So really short and, 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 and straightforward. But uh, any questions, let us know.